I know the title of this video is a bit of an oxymoron, as there really is no such thing as a good ATF director. That being said, I can't think of a worse pick. Hell, I would take Beto O'Rourke over Chipman, even with his hell yeah, we're going to take your AR-15 campaign promise. Hell yes, we're going to take your AR-15, your AK-47. We're not going to allow it to be used against our fellow Americans anymore. And how did that work out? Chipman is just that bad. Historically, even though the ATF is one of the myriad of alphabet agencies that shouldn't exist, the agency at least had some level of cooperation and communication with the gun industry. Chipman, meanwhile, has been lobbying for Giffords in Bloomberg's Every Town for Gun Safety for years and was even a senior policy advisor at Giffords. Let me repeat that. The man that Biden has nominated to lead the ATF was a senior advisor for a gun control group. Isn't that a conflict of interest? Not in my book. So basically, we have another agency in the government that's going to become a strong arm for political activism rather than acting under any semblance of upholding the law. Not like Biden's handlers give two shits about the law, but it would be nice if they could at least try pretending. But no amendment, no amendment to the Constitution is absolute. While with Giffords and Everytown, Chipman lobbied Congress for several gun control bills, including universal background checks, which, as a former ATF agent himself, he should already know basically exist, as well as bills that would ban modern sporting rifles, institute age-based gun bans, create a national firearm transfer delay period, and bills on handgun licensing and registration. Talk about putting the fox in charge of the hen house. And that is just Chipman's most recent resume. Beautiful. But wait, there's more. Before I launch into the other horrors of Chipman's policy positions and his involvement, and lies in Waco, I want to thank the United States Concealed Carry Association for helping to make this video possible. The USCCA is about something bigger than the right to bear arms. It's a resource to help you be ready for the before, during, and after of a self-defense incident. If you're not one of the 500,000 plus responsibly armed Americans who are proud USCCA members like myself, then now is the time to explore membership. Use my link on the screen or down in the description to learn about life-saving education, industry-leading training, and self-defense liability insurance. Of course, Biden talked up Chipman's 25 years as an ATF agent. What Biden failed to mention is that Chipman was one of the case agents at Waco. For proof, here's a photo dug up by the Daily Mail that shows Chipman posing in front of the wreckage. This man was part of the siege that took the lives of 76 men, women, and children and posed for a photo op in front of the smoldering remains. Remains of Americans, some of them innocent children. And according to the Daily Mail, it looks like Chipman was at Ruby Ridge too. <sighs> Sounds like he's quite a guy. He also falsely claimed that the Branch Davidians used 50 caliber rifles and shot down two Texas National Guard helicopters during the siege. The U.S. House of Representatives report states otherwise, saying that no helicopters were downed and no crew was hurt. And if that isn't evidence enough, none of these Barretts were recovered at the scene, meaning either they didn't exist or someone in the government found them and commandeered them for their own collection. While the government loves civil asset forfeiture, I'm more inclined to believe he just made the whole damn thing up. The comments were made during a September 2019 Ask Me Anything on Reddit, where he also made a comment stating that during his time at the ATF, he conducted a study on those who fail background checks. He told users that in his findings, most people who fail NICS checks later go on to commit crimes and offered the solution of arresting people before they commit crimes. Not really sure what we'd be arresting them for if they haven't committed a crime yet, but Chipman is all on board anyway. Later on, he clarified to another user that failing the background check itself should be made into a crime, and then called himself a patriot. If that's not bad enough, he also suggested during that AMA that FFLs aren't required to run background checks 
on firearm sales. And this guy was an ATF agent. More recently, he went to Newsweek last March to mock all 8.4 million new gun owners as fearful crazies who were paranoid and prepping for end time scenarios and zombie apocalypses. Um, I would secure that gun locked and unloaded and hide it behind the cans of tuna and beef jerky that you've stored in a cabinet and, um, you know, only bring that out if the zombies start to appear. Um, and I don't think they are. He went on to say that new gun owners think they're taking charge of their lives and protection, but really, they're more like Tiger King and they're putting themselves and their families in danger. In their mind, uh, they might be confident. They might think that they're diehard, ready to go. But unfortunately, they're more like Tiger King and uh, they're putting themselves and their families in danger. Worried about your safety or the safety of your family during the pandemic and riots? His suggestion was to buy deadbolts. He also blamed existing gun laws for pandemic fears, saying that current law allows people to hoard so-called weapons of war, aka AR-15s, the way they hoard toilet paper. The fact that he claims to be a gun owner and spent 25 years with the ATF and yet is telling reporters that the AR-15 is a weapon of war should be enough to tell you that this guy is a scumbag liar. But according to an August 2019 Facebook post, gun manufacturers specifically tailor their advertising to appeal to future mass shooters, according to Chipman. He also apparently likes to use his Facebook to push the narrative that gun owners are racists and trolls. This particular comment was in response to someone disagreeing with his characterization of ARs as assault weapons. Much professional, such wow. That's just the tip of the iceberg in terms of Chipman's history of lying, name calling, and forgetting that we're supposed to be living in a country that honors innocent until proven guilty. His policy positions are just as frightening. During the previously mentioned AMA, he told several users that he believed there should not only be a 1994 style assault weapons ban, but that all current ARs and similar sporting rifles should be registered and regulated under the NFA, which is a policy proposal that should sound a bit familiar if you've been following Biden's agenda. And that is terrifying. In 2016, he wrote on LinkedIn that all illegal gunfire should be investigated as a potential homicide. In 2018, he wrote his own roadmap for gun control. That roadmap included policy positions on shotguns, detachable magazines, standard capacity magazines, trigger cranks, and pistol kits, among other things. John Crump over at Ammo Land gave us some of the details. He reports that Chipman aims to overturn the 1955 ruling that Gatling guns aren't machine guns. His complaint is that a trigger crank can be attached to any modern rifle to change the rate of fire, meaning that any and all modern rifles have the potential to be machine guns. <laughs> In this document, he also labels any shotgun that can hold more than 12 rounds as high capacity. He proposes that these become NFA items and includes pump action shotguns under this category. He claims that shotguns with 12 rounds, pump action or not, don't serve any sporting purposes. He also plans to use this logic to stop them from being imported. Now, I've never played skeet, but I'm pretty sure it's considered a sport and it uses shotguns. Chipman also proposes that AR and AK pistols be labeled and reclassified as armor piercing pistols. Likewise, he plans to reclassify any gun with a stabilizing brace as an SBR. He claims that any pistol with a brace suddenly becomes a more lethal weapon that also somehow has a higher and more accurate rate of fire. So into the NFA it goes. This one shouldn't be much of a surprise as the ATF was already looking at it and now they've got their man.
Because of the made-up helicopter incident, he also proposes that anything that can shoot 50 cal and the ammo itself be put under the NFA because apparently Barrett's would allow mass shooters to take out radar dishes from a mile away. Very precise logic. Finally, according to Crump, Chipman also argues that standard capacity and detachable magazines should be added to the NFA because the sheer size of them allow someone to shoot multiple rounds quickly without reloading. Chipman claims that this would put them under the machine gun category because they don't require frequent manual reloading. <laughs> I can't even finish that sentence with a straight face. He suggests that these magazines and rifles just didn't exist prior to the NFA, and that's why they weren't labeled as machine guns. The trouble is, the NFA was amended in 1968, re-examined by the Supreme Court in 1971, and amended again in 1986. By that time, the world had AR-15s and both 20 and 30 round magazines. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the next ATF director as I really don't see anything stopping him from getting confirmed. He never should have been even nominated based on principle alone, but it's been a very long time since the government even bothered with the facade of running based on principle. Oh, snap! One good thing I found in my research is that Chipman himself, in that AMA, stated that it would be near impossible to enact any Australia-style gun control here due to the sheer numbers of firearms in circulation. So at least we have that going for us? Unfortunately, what he and his agency can do is regulate and regulate and regulate until most Americans are priced out. Especially if anything and everything is going to be labeled as an NFA item with a $200 or more tax stamp, because they're also trying to raise the price of tax stamps, of course. Anyway, that is your Second Amendment and firearms-related video for the day. Please like, share, and subscribe if you're new here. And if you're watching this on YouTube, ring the little notification bell, because 25% of the time, it works every time. <laughs> As always, thanks for tuning in, stay safe, and happy shooting.